Hi, I'm Eve Moses Cunningham, and welcome to the Feel Better Every Day podcast, helping you connect with and take better care of yourself and create a life you don't need to retreat from. Welcome to episode 17 of the Feel Better Every Day podcast. Today I'm talking to my friend and the author of It's Your Power Portal, Kathy Bishop. She's a medical herbalist and sharing some of her ideal and actual daily self-care practices. And as you listen, I'd love you to think about how you find ways to let the light into your life as much as possible, um, your social media use and how you might make it more conscious to make it more inspirational rather than dragging you down in any way. And also thinking about what in your daily routine helps you access your most creative thinking and being open to that problem solving, wonderful way in which our mind works when we're not forcing it. Let me know in the comments and I hope you enjoy the episode as much as I enjoyed making it. Hi, welcome Kathy Bishop. Thank you so much for joining me for the Feel Better Every Day podcast. Oh, thank you so much for having me, Eve. I'm so glad to be here with you. <laughs> oh, this is especially delightful. Um, we met because you moved in upstairs from me when I lived in Essex I in did. my last place in the UK. And we very quickly discovered how much we had in common. And um, I'm just remembering as a result of you, I was able to have my book launch at London's Coliseum, which just still blows my mind. <laughs> <laughs> I, know, I know those times. I know it was. Yeah. And I was really, really glad to be able to help you out with that. But um, yeah, so we met, we realised how much we had in common in terms of all the complementary therapies, all sorts of things. Your best known for your Into the Wild, um, you've created and sell a lube, which is vegan and organic. And you're also an author of this lovely book. It's your power portal. Yeah. So how long have you been into herbal medicine and vaginal health and looking after women? And what are you working on at the moment? Yeah, no, that's a great question. So thank you for that, Eve, and thank you for a great introduction. <laughs> um, so I guess I was into herbs from an early age. Um, I kind of got into herbal medicine through folk and folk music and through that kind of learning about folk medicine and kind of learning then about kind of what was growing in the countryside around where I grew up. Um, and it was only later that I decided to make that formal. And in my mid twenties, I went back to university and did a second degree in Western herbal medicine, um, which qualified me to be a medical herbalist. And um, from that point on, I've been a member of the National Institute of Medical Herbalists, which is the oldest um, professional body of medical herbalists in the UK. Um, and I think well, I didn't realise this at the time that I was training, but it became really clear from soon after I graduated that the clients that I was drawing towards me were women with vaginal health conditions. And actually, if you think about it now, reflecting back, it, it was kind of written always that it was to be thus. Um, I suffered with, I talk about it this in my book, um, I suffered with a vaginal thrush from, I just turned 11 the first time I ever got it. And that kind of stayed with me really into my mid thirties on and off, but the majority of the time during those years. So it was quite a lot of time. That's mm -hmm. not why I decided to train as a practitioner, although yeah. throughout my teenage years and beyond, I did consult with herbalists and things about it. Um, but yeah, it just seemed like this was going to be my path, you know, um, as, as my herbalist once said to me, you've been given this as a gift. And I was like, say what I didn't understand at the time but yeah it really has been my gift and um to really kind of dive deep into that to be able to help other women it's kind of a yeah. very silent vaginal health issues are kind of very silent and in terms of people aren't speaking about them very often even less than they are about menstrual health so yeah it's, it's really hard to gauge how many people but the amount of interest that I certainly get with my work it's kind of silent you know, I want, I'm, I'm hesitating to use the word epidemic, but yeah, you get the idea. You get the idea. So through that, 
I went on to develop um, my lubricant wild one that, um, yeah, that has been out on the market the last the last three years. So won a couple of awards and yeah, Brilliant. so people really seem to like that as well and writing the book as an extension. Yeah, wonderful. So um, tell me a bit about if you had all the time in the world, all the energy in the world, what would you love to be doing when you wake up in the morning for your self-care and your uppercase self-care? Brilliant. Okay. Well, first of all, um, there is in our society this feeling that, you know, it's a very sort of masculine, patriarchal driven idea of like productivity. You're kind of on from the moment you start and we kind of work really hard. Otherwise, where is our value in society? And I've like all of us probably have kind of fallen victim to that at different points, whereas recently in the recent years I'm like leaning very much into the fact that I'm not an early bird great if you are but it's not me I'm not a night owl either I'm kind of a during the day kind of person so I don't want to wake up at five o'clock to get an extra couple of hours of work in um or go or hit the gym at that point I want to sleep in till at least 7 30 8 o'clock so that's my ideal um, I tend to wake up naturally at 7.30, kind of start the day with a cup of tea and just let the light into my life. So kind of, you know, ideally I'd have a little area that I could sit outside, especially when it was warm enough and enjoy, enjoy like my cup of herbal tea in the morning and maybe also take in some meditation around that time and really think about my intentions for the day and do a bit of movement as well. So um, there's some there's some yoga movements that I quite like to do um, for myself at home at different points. But if I could bring them in daily and a little bit of um, uh, other floor exercises as well, that would be my ideal. And then just kind of ground it myself into the day and not feel pressured by this internal drive that I've almost and most of us have been trained to kind yep. of be <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> so um, that that would be my ideal. Um, what about the reality what about the like kind of not necessarily the everyday reality but those days where you just don't have the time and energy what do you have to do what are your self-care essentials my self-care essential really is having a shower in the morning so when I first launched I was work I've been working on uh, Wild Run Into the Wild about six years before it launched in 2000 but in that launch year obviously first year of the pandemic everything was thrown into flux anyway for people um, but really I would just wake up and go to my desk and work. Uh, at some point, someone would hand me a cup of herbal tea. Maybe I think about showering at some point in the day, uh, but I'd feel guilty, you know, but really one of my self-care essentials really is showering because it's part of my creative process. Mm -hmm. I often talk about getting downloads and things, and I'm not too sure really if that language for myself, but this is where all of my ideas and my ideation comes to me and where my brain just kind of starts flowing and working and that creative process. So a shower is yeah. part of the creative process. Um, and even if I think I don't have time, I know that I will just feel so much better. So shower always. So um, in the mornings when I have early meetings and things, I don't book anything before nine, um, but shower is the thing. Shower and a cup of tea are my things. <laughs> brilliant and what about later in the day what do you um like to do all things like what would be your ideals and what is the reality including <laughs> your winding down for bed routine yeah so my ideal would be and I'm going to start with the reality first because okay. then it kind of it kind of shows what my ideal would be my ideal and versus the reality so the reality is I sit there scrolling on Instagram uh -huh. and I found sitting myself sitting scrolling on Instagram to 11 at night. Mm -hmm. From what time? I don't know. From sort of like, maybe for like a good 45 minutes. Yeah. Not the way to wind down for bed. This is not good. So my phone is set so that it um, goes on to like a night sort of setting. So the okay. light goes off. So it's more yellowy, the screen. And there are accounts that I follow on Instagram that I do get a lot of inspiration from. Like, truly, yeah. there's obviously a load of like stuff on there as well, mm -hmm. you know, kind of the chatter and things. So there are some things in there that do nourish me. Um, 
And I've been actually recently just very much like, no, so much so that I think I'm going to be taking, this is very brave to say this, I think I'm going to be taking the Facebook app off of my phone permanently and just logging in on it on desktop for work. Mm -hmm. But yeah, cutting that out. Um, And yeah, a lot of it was just screen time, really, uh, using TV to unwind and then winding myself up a little bit again before bed with Instagram. That's yeah. not sensible, and but somehow <laughs> we just fall into those traps. I you think. say somehow they have some of the brightest minds in the universe working on making these apps as addictive as possible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It's true. <laughs> I think, you know, I mean, we say whatever works for you, you know, yeah. it's fine. Some people will feel like, but realistically, just physiologically, yeah, have kind of um as as minimal blue light for our circadian rhythms before 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 we go to bed is sensible for every human on the planet so Mm. um (laughs) so doing that and also um getting into bed by about half 10 and being quite strict with that and being like actually reimagining this is time to sleep like normalizing that this we don't have to stay up late because we're adults and we've been working hard so we deserve it actually we deserve good sleep so that is something that I've been changing recently um and also reading at least I like you know have a 10 minutes of reading a book for pleasure before sleep not a work related book although that you know sometimes that can be but that get your mind working too much yeah but a book for pleasure so that is my ideal really and okay. I can't do it. <laughs> brilliant I love what you're saying about the I deserve good sleep mm. and um yeah it, it's that figuring out how to make all the things that serve us friendly rather than authoritarian I have to do yeah. whatever yeah I'm really you know recently I've lived probably the majority of my adult life by to-do list because that's how I organize myself that's how my brain works and actually if self-care needs to feel like another to-do list at some point it's going to stop serving you probably maybe in the beginning it can be useful depending on your situation I think personally but at a point you're going to feel like it's just another thing it's just another thing so if you for me it's been like a mindset switch was like actually I'm going to do things that serve me and my health and my mental health Mm -hmm. and my sleep hygiene although I don't really like using in these situations but it's a well-known term or getting to be a well-known term that serve those things that serve me not just I deserve it's like you know I deserve to sit up and watch another episode on Netflix of yeah okay but it's just it's just flipping the mindset and yeah so So, the body I guess absolutely and um you've said a little already but if you could go back in time with some love some care some advice for younger Kathy what would that be it would be listen to all the very wise herbalists and therapists that I've consulted with over the years who have told me Kathy it might be beneficial for you if you meditated (laughs) (laughs) um I had that said to me so many times and I started meditating maybe in about 2016. It's not a practice I do daily um, and I don't want it to become a should because should don't feel great, Um, especially right now for me. But um, yeah, I think this would have been, this would have helped me deal with, with just life stress and, you know, when I was doing my herbal medicine degree and, you know, things Mm. that, things that come into life like that yeah okay they knew what they were talking about <laughs> <laughs> well thank you so much for talking to me for this um where can people find you I'm gonna have your information in the show notes yeah. but where can people find you for example on Instagram and your website absolutely so if um you go online to my website um into the wild so wild is spelled w-y-l-d-e so that's into the wild.com 
um, and you can find out about the lubricant there and also find out about me and also consulting with me as a herbalist um, if you have vaginal health issues that's what I'm here for that's what I specialize in uh, my clinic is dedicated to you basically um, so and you can also email me from there as well um, and Instagram I'm on at into the wild so so and at the moment I have my clinic is actually open to taking new clients that's not something I can say every month mm -hmm. if you're looking in October September 2023 post-production will take however long post-production takes so I don't know when this will air um I've never done a podcast before um but presumably yeah. you'll have that information on your website so whenever people are listening to this they'll yeah, absolutely do get in touch yeah. because um the best thing to do is yeah just send me a note and yeah. um, we'll see when we when we can fit you in as soon as possible so Aww. well <laughs> thanks again thank you so much for joining me it's been a delight and thank you for inviting me Eve. it's great to see you <laughs> thank you for listening to this episode of the feel better every day podcast I'd love to hear what you're going to do in terms of making time for your shower equivalent, a way in which you can connect with your innate creativity, whether you consider yourself creative or not. And I'd also love if you are happy to like, rate, review, subscribe. Let me know if you've got any questions or comments and um, share it if you're happy to with people you think might benefit. Next week's guest is the delightful Marilyn Devonish and um, we'll be entering the solar plexus chakra part of our work in terms of the love your whole self chakra journey that I'm running with the embodied well-being community over on Substack so you can find out more about that at selfcarecoaching.net or evemc.substack.com but um, I'm very much looking forward to sharing that episode and this as with all episodes so far is produced by myself your host Eve Moses Cunningham thanks again for listening